Hello, uh, I'm Dimitri Merachkovsky, and I'm going to uh, talk to you about uh, the NAO. So you've un I hope you've seen the, the dance at the beginning of the keynote this morning. And if not, uh, make sure to see it. It's cool. And so we are the company uh, who is building uh, this robot. And I've been working in Aldebaran for three years. And I'm responsible of all kinds of SDKs, so making sure anyone can program the robot in any way they want. So I'm here to talk to you about how you can program it in Java. Uh, yeah, and just before I start, there is going to be a surprise at the end. So <laughs> not that kind of surprise. OK, so I'm just going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, Aldebaran Robotics. And then I'm going to talk about the Naoki framework. So it's a robotic framework we give, uh, we give you. Uh, it is running on the robot and so on. Uh, then I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the Java SDK, uh, show you some examples and do lots and lots of demonstrations. Uh, yeah, and of course, time for questions at the end because, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, hello, I'm Lao. So, Aldebaran Robotics. So, the main research and development is done in Paris. So, everything from the low level, the mechatronics, the electronics, uh, up to uh, the uh, microcontrollers, the embedded software, uh, the Naoki framework, and the graphical tools you are going to see in a few moments. Uh, everything is done in Paris. Uh, and we also have some other offices in, uh, in foreign countries. Uh, for sales and so on. So we've got uh, 150 experts, more than 250 nodes around the globe, and more than 500 universities are using nodes. So they are doing lots of different stuff with the robots. So we've got universities using it for robotics, obviously, to teach uh, robotics or to do research. Uh, you've, and you, we also have some universities using it for very different uh, subjects. Like, for instance, there is a university in uh, Notre Dame uh, in the uh, United States, and they are using the robot to help uh, autistic children because they discover that when you have uh, an autistic children talking with a, communicating with a robot, it's easier for them, and you can uh, just, uh, it just helps people treating, uh, treating the child. Uh, so... Yeah, just a quick presentation of now. So uh, I'm going to let it do the presentation himself because uh, I'm a losy speaker. So here we go. Oops. Okay. Uh, so here I can connect to the robots. And here you can see there is a small behavior called presentation, so I'm going to launch that. Oh, yeah, you can't hear it. Uh, sorry. Uh. Wherein I'm fully programmable. I'm autonomous, and I can connect to the internet through Wi-Fi. I can recognize your face, answer your questions, play music, grab objects, and even play soccer like a pro. I've more than 3,000 brothers and sisters in use all around the world in university and research laboratories. Do you want more technical details? Yes, please. Counting every articulation in my body, I have 25 degrees of freedom. The sun is located on my torso, allow me to detect obstacles that I might encounter. My two cameras give me an enlarged field of vision. Thanks to them, I can look right in front of me or at my feet, you know, to avoid walking where I should not. The 
four microphones around my head allow me to detect the origin of sound nearby. Okay, so that was that was it for the robot. Uh, just going to let him sit, so he doesn't get tired. Yep. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, so that was uh, just a, a small example of what you can do with Choreograph. Uh, so here I just uh, used it to launch uh, the behavior and make the robot move and speak and so on. Uh, just uh, don't, uh, yeah, please quit. So you have uh, all the details uh, on this slide if you are interested. So uh, uh, the hardware is quite uh, good in terms of processing power. Uh, and um, so, um, yeah, just a few words. So there is a Linux embedded in the head uh, with a, a customized version of, the, of a Linux distribution called Gen2. So it's really a standard x86 distribution, so you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, if you are really the geeky type, we can give you a virtual machine. Uh, so, uh, uh, like you can uh, run it in a virtual box, and you get exactly the same environment as the robot. So it's really great to experiment uh, new software, or new libraries, or whatever. Okay, so and so we we ju we don't do just this robot. We also are uh, working on a bigger robot called Romeo, so it's one, uh, 40, uh, one meter 40, and this one is really the big version of Nao, so all the software will be the same, uh, but uh, the goal for Romeo is really to be uh, able to help uh, people in their homes, so that's why we need a bigger robot, obviously. Uh, and we also have uh, lots of various tools, so Corella has already shown you uh, some simulators for you to play with, and uh, we also have something called the developer program, so any developer can just uh, go to uh, developer.aldebron-robotics.com, uh, pay something like 4,000 euros, and you get an AO and you can write your own application for the robot. And you can share some code and some other application with other people. And it's really great. Uh, I've been following the developer program for uh, about one year, or maybe a little bit more, and it's really great because uh, lots of people are doing crazy applications, very different stuff. Uh, it goes from just uh, reading for you the title of the New York Times uh, using uh, the sign language, or uh, just uh, just playing uh, cute games, or asking quiz, or streaming the radio, or uh, doing some Skype, or anything. So really a great uh, co community of developers, so you are welcome to join us. Okay, so this is uh, my first demo, so I'm going to show you a little bit more about Choreograph. So let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. So a good thing you have uh, in uh, Choreograph is that you got a robot view over there. Uh, do you see the cursor? Yeah. So you've got a uh, robot view, so you can just uh, move the robot and you can see it move uh, in the view. And obviously you can also use Choreograph without being connected to any robot. So you can see what the animation you are uh, programming with Choreograph look like. 
And uh, really the great thing about CoreRef is that it's very easy to program. So uh, I'm going to go back uh, about the APIs we give you uh, from the robot, but here you can already see we've got uh, a really big set of uh, uh, standard library, uh, standard boxes. And so for instance, if I just want to make it speak, I can just drag and drop the say box. So let's do that. And here I connect it, and I run play, and I just said hello. So you have to trust the people at the front row for that, but uh, he said hello. Uh, so obviously you can just uh, double click here and just add something like uh, hello devox. And if you do that again, yeah, he just said hello devox. And I'm really surprised because he never said devox before and it just happened perfectly, so that's cool. Uh, the other great thing you can do with Coreref is that, for instance, if you want to make the robot move his arm while he's saying hello, uh, again, it's really easy to do. You just uh, take uh, the animation. Here you go. Oh, sorry, I forgot something. Here we go. Yeah, so I just forgot to put the motor on. Uh, but as you can see, it's, it was really easy to make the robot do two things at the same time uh, because you have the nice graphical environment tool and you don't have to worry about threads or anything like that. Uh, maybe a last little thing I can show you. Yeah, I've got time. Uh, Here, if I take the bumper box, yeah, so I'm going to say hello, and I can just click on the bumper and you can see the output. Uh, so, for instance, I can connect the bumper to say. Let's try that. And so everyone, the bumper is pressed, the robot is going to say hello. So, as you can see, it was really, really easy to do. So uh, that's about it for CoreRef. There are obviously uh, lots of other tools. There is a, a tool for uh, seeing what the robot is seeing. There are tools to make him learn some faces and so on. Uh, OK, so that's all for CoreRef. Uh, so just a little uh, more explanation about the Naoki framework. So the Naoki framework is just uh, what makes uh, this demonstration possible. Uh, so it's cross-platform, it's cross-language. So here you've seen uh, Naoki running on the robot, uh, but you can run Naoki on your desktop. So that's how we can do a simulation. And you can program in C++ and Python mostly, but uh, we also support other languages. Uh, Java, obviously, but also MATLAB and .NET and so on. Uh, you've got nice features like introspection and modularity built in in the language. And uh, as you can see, when you go from one language to another, uh, the syntax does not change much. Uh, all the functionality of the robot is uh, separated inside different modules. So a module is just a name with a set of methods. So you can think about it a bit like a class. Um, and so for instance, you've got a module named all memory when you can uh, insert some data and get the data back. So you, can, you have access to every uh, single sensor uh, you have on the robot. So you can get the position of every uh, joint. You can get uh, what the sonar has seen. You can get the images and so on. Uh, for instance, you also got a module named motion where you, where you have the, uh, the method to make the robot move or walk and so on uh, and so forth. Uh, so everything is documented. So we have a really nice uh, documentation that is publicly available. So I can show you just a little bit. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so uh, this is on, on my laptop, but it's available online. And uh, you can see uh, all the Naoki API. So you can see you've got tons and tons of uh, different modules uh, with each time uh, lots and lots of various uh, uh, methods available. So. So you really have a, a very big set of API uh, you can use to do uh, 
very different stuff. For instance, for motion, you can do from uh, really controlling uh, the motor joint by joint, or just saying some, something very high level that just goes there, and it will compute the trajectory and do the work. Uh, okay, so this is the first bit of code we are going to, uh, to look at. So here there is a package called uh, com Aldebar and Proxy. And in it, you've got uh, what we call the proxy. So the proxy is just an object that is giving you back a, classes, a class that has the same method as the uh, modules it is connected to. So here I'm just uh, creating a proxy to a robot with an, IP, an IP and a port. And then I can just call whatever method the uh, test-to-speech proxy is using. So this is how it works. Uh, and just a last thing about L memory. So as I said, uh, you can write and uh, read values from there, and you can write absolutely everything you want and get lots and lots and lots of, of information from L memory. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make this demo with uh, Eclipse and a Linux 64 bits machine, but uh, it works on uh, it works on Linux 32, it works on Windows, it works on Mac, and uh, yeah, just uh, just that. Nothing special here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to show you how you use the Java SDK. So here we go. Yeah, we all love Eclipse. Okay, so here is the example I was uh, talking to you about. So I'm just going to uh, uh, run that. Uh, just going to change that. So first, so so Lisa is just the name of the robot, and then I can just run that. Yeah, so and the robot said, hello, Devox. So as I said, uh, really simple stuff here. Uh, so of course, you can do, uh, uh, yeah, so <coughs> something I did not call, uh, talk about. So there is, uh, obviously, for the framework to be usable in C++ and Python and various languages, we have to have a generic uh, container for all the types. Uh, so it's called IL value in the C++ world, and it's called a variant in Java. So basically what I'm doing here is that I called insert data with an int, and when I get a data, I get a variant, and I have to use the to int uh, method to get back an int. And so that's how we can, we can do this. And the answer is four, which does not seem right. Uh, because as we all know, the answer is 42. Uh, so more stuff about variants. So uh, here what I'm doing is that I'm just making the head moves. So you can see the API is a bit more complex because uh, I have to use uh, some arrays of floats uh, to use the machine API. I have to use this uh, a bit annoying syntax, uh, but that's OK. And that's how I can make the robot move his head. So of course you can build from that. Uh, for instance, you can imagine you have a small uh, C++ uh, software running on the robot, and you are doing your high-level operation on your desktop. And you can imagine just uh, recording all the sensors while you are doing that. And you can see uh, all the little details of what is going on and how uh, the motion module is making the interpolation and so on. So it's really great uh, to uh, teach robotics or we have a, a sense of what is going on and so on. Uh, so let's do a small example. So yeah, for instance, as I said, the, oops, sorry, this example is wrong. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do something you should not do, which is to change the example. So. I'm going to take too long, motion. Uh, 
And so, as I said, uh, the motion API can be very, so you can see you've got the auto-completion on every uh, method, on every module. So here I'm just going to say wake up, and then we are going to make it uh, move a little bit. So something like 30 centimeter and straight. And I have to use floats because motion uses floats. So here we go. And then just motion dot rest. And so I can just run that. And so you can see how easy it was. So I did not have to know about the work algorithm or anything. And I did not have to care about uh, whether the motors were on or off. And everything just works. So that's how we do it. Uh, okay, so uh, last example. So don't really know what this example is going to do right now. Uh, so here the idea is that obviously in Java you've got lots and lots of great libraries. Uh, so here I'm just scrapping the surface. Uh, but if I run this example, you can see there was a swig image. And so here you are on the screen. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so you can imagine building whatever you want from that. Uh, you can run your whole uh, vision algorithm on the images the robot is taken, or you can just do a telepresence, or really whatever you want. OK, so where was I? Uh, yes, so I've got a little bit more time. Uh, I can show you a uh, nice little tricks uh, if you want. Tricks, uh, if you want. So I'm just going to fire up Eclipse again. Sorry. Uh, and then start cover off. So here I'm going to say, so I want uh, to uh, look for a key that is called answer. There we go. And yeah, no, forget about that. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, OK, so those are the examples I had. Uh, so if you have any questions there, because I've got uh, Many, many time left, so any question? Before I go to the, so I've got a little thing to show you at the end, but if you have questions already, yeah? Yeah, you are spoiling the surprise, but uh, yeah, right now everything I've, sh I've shown you on Java was running on the desktop. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> So uh, 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 let's do that. So here I'm going to uh, connect to the to the robot. So here we go. So the nice thing about the operating system you have on the robot is that it's just a standard Linux. So here I'm using uh, SSH as I would do for any uh, remote uh, Linux box. And uh, you've got some uh, pre-compiled executable you have on the robot. So I can just uh, type say, and it's going to say something. Yeah, so that was easy. Uh, but the code is running on the robot. So uh, what I did is that I did a little trick. So this is the trick. And uh, yes, sorry, forgot. Uh, and you have Java on the robot. So I can just try that. And it was uh, quite easy to do because of the 
a virtual machine I talked, uh, I'll talk to you about. Uh, all I had to do was to compile Java on the virtual machine and then send it to the robot. Uh, and it was really easy to do. So what you can also do, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Uh, Yeah, that's better. Uh, and what I was able to do recently was just to put Scala on the robot. So this is our friend Scala. So it's going to take a while to start because uh, I just the way Scala is. Sorry about any Scala developer in the room, but uh, yeah, it's really long. Come on, you can do it. Okay, and so here I can just run uh, something like, uh, so uh, same package, com.talibran.proxy, and here, uh, exactly the same thing, I can just create a proxy to the text-to-switch module. And then again, tts.c. Hello. Um, and here you go. Uh, so this is the first uh, ever robot to speak Scala in front of a live audience. So give it a round of applause, please. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was it for the cool stuff. Uh, 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 what do I have? Yeah, so again, I'm uh, I'm very early, so any question you have? Yeah? Yeah, so there are some uh, uh, an inertial unit inside the body and uh, yeah, so the robot can sense uh, when it's uh, going to fall or I can sense if it's stable or not and it can uh, just make sure it's not falling or things like that. And basically, if it falls, it can react react to the fall and just protect himself. Uh, maybe you've seen it, uh, the most of that. I'm not going to do that because it's not my robot, but uh, <laughs> usually it's pretty safe. Okay, yeah? Uh, sorry, I did not hear you. Ah, you mean how long it takes to make an application? Oh, uh, I don't have any good answer to that, but uh, uh, so the robot was uh, done five years ago and for instance, uh, the developer program I told you about was uh, started, uh, I think, one year and a half. And the store uh, for the now where you can put stuff uh, recently just got out of beta. So I really don't know. It just, it just takes some time to make this kind of thing happen. Yeah, another question here. Uh, sorry. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Um, so basically, what you have uh, is that you can uh, is that you can uh, write what we call behaviors. So here you can see I have several behaviors, and you can uh, you have an, AP, an API to choose what behavior you want to launch. So this is very basic, and uh, we actually are uh, thinking about more about how you can we have applications the same way you have, uh, for instance, on, on Android. Uh, where you have an application taking the focus and then uh, you interact with this application and where you're done, you just go into the background and you start something else. So something like that. Uh, if you go to the store, you'll find something called the Now's Life. Uh, 
which does a bit a thing like that. So the robot is basically when he's idle and doesn't sense uh, doesn't sense anything going on, he's just doing quiet random stuff. And then when he detects someone is near, he just asks him, so what do you want to do? And he just run one of the installed applications. So that's a start. So we are, uh, it's, uh, it's a subject we are still uh, exploring and looking for options and experimenting, basically. Okay, any other question? Okay. Uh, Yeah, so I just have a uh, few links for you to uh, to end this talk. So uh, the first one is developer dot robotics dot com. So just go there. Uh, you've got a small test uh, to uh, to pass to prove you are really a developer. But uh, if you are here, there should be no problem. And then you can uh, get a robot and uh, exchange some code, some ideas, and so on. Uh, uh, you also get a uh, really close interaction with all the people from Aldebaran. So we've got forums, you can ask your question here and we answer. Uh, don't hesitate to go there. And uh, also we are recruiting a lot, we are hiring a lot. So lots of job positions are open uh, in Paris and everything you need to know is in uh, at this address called shapetheworld.fr and you can go there and see what kind of people we are looking for. Uh, but Basically, we are looking for uh, everything from uh, very low level development to very high uh, level development. So just uh, go and see for yourselves. And lastly, here is my email if you want to, uh, if you want to contact me later. Okay, so that was it. Uh, maybe you'd like a little dance uh, to end the talk. Why not? Uh, do that. Oops. So. Oops. Okay, so never mind. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs>